earlier I had shown this tree to you saying what we can see with neutrons in condensed matter I said structure and dynamics now I have finished this part of the talk which is longer and possibly more used by people so measure intensity versus angle I mentioned this and when it comes to what range of structures with the crystal structures I should also include liquid and amorphous diffractometer these are all short range structures crystal structures at angstrom liquid and amorphous diffractometer also in the angstrom range then I talked about sands where you can see micelles, precipitates and inhomogeneities at typically about 10 nanometers, 100 angstrom to even micron size and the last bit of it what I did was reflectometry neutron reflectometry which was unpolarized polarized specular and off specular so with this now with sans reflectometry crystallography I mean crystal structure crystal diffraction liquid and amorphous diffraction we have completed all the parts which are structural and I must mention here that because I was talking about structure which means spatial correlation either atom atom in case of crystallography structure or inhomogeneities like micelles and others so so far all these include coherent scattering length coherent scattering length length this is a information that I want to share and now this part is over this part is over and now we go on to dynamics so now over here you need to measure intensity of the scattered beam not only as a function of angle which you are doing here but also we have to find out the energy of the scattered beam so you have EF minus EI which are the energy differences KF minus KI which are the wave vector differences and we will be measuring what is known as scattering law which is this is equal to H cross omega and this is equal to Q wave vector transfer this is what we will be measuring for dynamics not only Q but also energy of the scattered beam. So the question comes what is the range of dynamics that we can study using neutrons. So I just mentioned here phonons at 10 to the minus 50 second typical time scales, rotational diffusions we can measure or we can measure very slow dynamics using polymer backbones. But here I should have included, I didn't, my apologies for that. We can also measure the, uh, dynamics of molecular vibration, molecular vibration, 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 and this will have even slower minor dynamics, not slower, I'm sorry, faster. So these as we go higher in energy the dynamics is becomes faster because time scales are shorter which are inverse to the energy the energy changes are larger when I go to longer time scales that means delta T or whatever we are measuring are larger then we go to energy differences which are smaller so we are going to slower processes the slower processes have smaller energy transfer faster processes have higher energy transfer this is true not only in this case it might we might extend it all the way up to nuclear physics 
where it is scattering experiments at very high energy transfer because they are looking at time scales which are much much shorter than what you are doing here. So now the discussion on inelastic neutron scattering for dynamics will target the question what Q range and what energy range. But before that, let me just bring it to your notice that in case of neutrons, the thing is that the wavelength one angstrom and the energies, they are closely matching and neutrons penetrate very deeply. So you can span a very large part of the Q omega space. For example, if I am doing Raman scattering, Raman scattering, Raman or infrared absorption spectroscopy, I can find out the energy, uh, vibrational energy levels of a molecule. But the fact remains that the wavelengths are typically around 3000 to when I go to infrared 10,000 angstrom of the impinging radiation. Look at the impinging radiation wavelength here. So when I try to evaluate the Q value by 4 pi by lambda sine theta, sine theta at best can be 1 and this lambda tells me that for this kind of experiment infrared or IR, I am close to Q equal to 0. Whereas in case of neutrons, I can span a very large part of Q range. So that is the advantage of neutron that in case of X-rays, wavelength is around 1 angstrom. Actually copper has got 1.54 angstrom, copper K alpha. But the energy is too large. It's around 12, 12 kilo electron volts. So there the problem is we can't span the energy range. So in case of neutrons, I can span the Q values and I can also span the energy ranges. And you can see energies from sub micro electron volt to tens of milli electron volt to hundreds of milli electron volts. I can span using neutrons and also a large range of Q. So using the here various spectrometers have been mentioned like backscattering, time of flight, triple axis, spin nico. I cannot describe all of them to you but I will target to explain to you the function of the major inelastic neutron spectrometers at Dhruva and at other parts in the world. So before I go into the discussion, I want to take you back to the general theory that I discussed with you several lectures back at the beginning of the course. Please remember this was the scattering law d2 sigma d omega de that's why it tend to measure. You can see we wrote this in terms of an initial state k lambda specified by energy and momentum and the final state which is e lambda prime for diffraction experiment lambda equal to lambda prime and we put a delta function by hand stating that in any scattering process the total energy neutron plus system which we are studying should be conserved. So that conservation comes from this delta function. Next step we wrote the delta function in this form as an integral over time this is a delta function energy is a Fourier transform of integration over time of e to the power minus i t h plus omega which is the energy transfer and the difference this is this is for neutron and this is for the energy difference in the system from between e lambda and lambda prime states and this should be giving us a delta function. And the interaction potential, if I, I had impinge, uh, imposed a delta function potential, here otherwise in general, I can write the potential 
also as a Fourier transform over Q space of the spatial potential Vjr. J is the site and Vjr is the potential at the J site. Now, <coughs> here from there by putting this expression for the delta function, I could write this expression equal to in terms of a Fourier transform over time to go to S Q omega. So the Fourier transform over time of a function which is a sum over the initial states and the final states lambda lambda prime p lambda being the probability of the initial state which is e to the power e lambda by kt for experiments done at temperature kt the scattering experiment and e lambda by kt is the Boltzmann factor that is p lambda but interestingly here because there is a square of that I can break open I will just try to tell you there is a square I am not writing everything so when I break it this becomes lambda lambda prime and then one more bracket for d to sigma d omega d and here I have let us say lambda prime v j prime e to the power i q dot r j prime lambda this kind of expression we know that for a stationary state earlier also I mentioned to you lambda is given by e to the power i e lambda t by h cross lambda which is time independent if I do that then please note so I had lambda prime v j prime q anyway I got from uh, this expression this expression but I have put in this expression that lambda prime the time dependence has gone on to e to the power i e lambda prime by h cross e to the power i q dot r j prime and from here e to the power minus i t e lambda by h cross into lambda but this here I will use this expression use this expression is given by because h lambda for an eigenfunction gives me e lambda lambda so I can write it and then I can write the expression you can see so I have got v j prime q e to the power i because it is v j dagger it was so e to the power i t e lambda by h cross e to the power i q dot rj e to the power minus i e t e lambda by h cross lambda now I can further write this as So now this part e to the power i h t by h cross e to the power i q dot r j for any operator a in quantum mechanics the time dependence in this picture is given by
and this is time dependence so here the operator is the position operator rj prime hence this expression allows me to write to write rj which was time dependent so far it's time dependent as rj prime rj prime rj prime t so now this part gives me the time dependence of rj prime and i can write it the, write the expression as the whole expression ultimately boils down to e to the power minus i q dot rj zero e to the power i q dot rj prime t so this expression here to get the scattering law d to sigma d omega d e i need the time correlation of the position operators that means given a point at time zero a molecule is at a point r at time zero where is it at time t i can do a modeling for example for a simple let us say this is it will be obvious if a particle is moving with a velocity v is equal to u plus ft simple school level problem given the time i can find out the velocity and then i can find out the position if it is moving in a linear path so given r0 i can calculate all the r prime t so the correlation function is known but for many problems we have to take recourse to various kinds of modeling to get this correlation function because this correlation function and its fourier transform will directly give me the s of q omega so now i write it in terms of scattering law in q omega space and this scattering law is given by the time fourier transform of this correlation function and its ensemble average this angular brackets give me the ensemble average and this contains the dynamics of the system so we can study all dynamics in the system provided one my energy range allows that and secondly i know some way of finding out rj0 and rj prime t and my next part will be explaining how do we calculate such correlations and also i mentioned it earlier let me repeat it again that if i consider this is in q space then this function is also fourier transform of a correlation function g in real space so now a real a function in the real space g of rt goes to an intermediate scattering function which is fourier transform over q and r and this goes to s of q omega over omega and time so is a time fourier transform if i try to come to the other side it will be omega energy fourier transform and this is a double fourier transform of the pair correlation function so ultimately we have landed up at g of rt which we need to know and g of rt means the pair correlation function if a particle is at origin at time t equal to 0 what is the probability of finding the particle the same particle or another particle if it is a self if it is a same particle then it is a self correlation function if it is another particle then it is a pair correlation function but the time part also includes the dynamics and g of rt gives me the dynamics of it if i take out the time then it becomes only a structural work and if i include time then i have to find out how to find g of rt for the system so then with this much of brief introduction to how we included time and dynamics in our formalism i will just take you to various time scales of dynamics 
which I also discussed briefly earlier. So, molecular vibrations, few to tens of electron volts, and other techniques like FTI Raman can be used, but not for all Q values or not for all kinds of spatial correlation because Q range gives me spatial correlation, whereas these techniques they study at close to Q equal to zero. Phonons are so these molecular vibrations can also be studied using neutrons. Next, let us talk about phonons. Phonons are few milli electron volts to hundreds of milli electron volts. Raman scattering can be used, but again at Q equal to zero. And because for phonons we use the Brillua zo zone for plotting the or finding out the phonons in them, so we can only do Raman scattering for zone center phonons. Whereas for phonons over the entire Brillua zone, I will come to it shortly, we need to go to neutrons. Then there is something called stochastic dynamics. What is stochastic dynamics? The best example in a liquid, let us say in water, one H2O molecule, how it moves around. So it's, it's a stochastic dynamics. So stochastic dynamics like diffusion, it can be studied using quasi-elastic neutron scattering, which I'll be discussing. So these two techniques I'll be discussing initially. Then I'll briefly touch upon molecular vibration and also a technique known as pin echo, which is, I should say, one of the novel techniques, not used too much, but it's a novel technique to understand very slow dynamics, tens of nanosecond time scales like uh, polymer chains moving in the melt and that kind of dynamics using spin echo. So this will be my discussion and the list over through which I will go. Now first, let me discuss with you the phonons. You are familiar from your master's degree that phonons are collective quantized oscillation of atoms in a crystalline material. So, <clears throat> I have borrowed this picture. It's a lithium fluoride crystal. You can, here we assume a spring between the atoms of the constituent crystal. So it has to be a crystal, crystallographic structure when we talk about phonons. And we consider that the atoms are bound by springs with each other. Now, then I can write down the equation of motion for the sth atom in the system in terms of the elastic constant because the displacement is u s plus p minus u s. So displacement of u s plus p -th atom minus u s atom gives the relative displacement multiplied by the spring constant and summed over all the neighbors gives me the equation of motion for the sth atom. So if it is a monatomic atom, then of course Cp is the spring and Cp is the spring constant for particles move from for atoms move away from each other by p units. Now in this I assume two things. One, the it's a time dependent is given by e to the power i omega t. That means this gives me that there are vibrations which are quantized with energy h cross omega. If I consider a time dependence of e to the power i omega t, then this equation gives me the equation in terms of displacement and omega square. And also, I assume a wave-like solution for the displacement of the atoms in the lattice. So the, this displacement, wave-like nature of the displacement is a, a fundamental under uh, the cornerstone of phonons in solid. So, the displacement of S plus P -th atom, U S plus P, is given in terms of a constant and e to the power i S plus P, and this is a wave vector, and this is a lattice spacing. Wave vector is the wave vector of the spatial variation of this displacement. 
this we have to find out so with this when i substitute it in this equation i get cp e to the power i s plus p k a minus e to the power i s k a and i have substitute u is u s equal to u e to the power i s k everywhere and i lambda a omega square equal to e to the power i s k a minus 1 <coughs> it should have been i p k i am sorry p k now this is summing over all neighbors now i know that if i my starting atom is here whether i go left or whether i go right there is a translational symmetry from this that means for p equal to plus and p equal to minus cp if the same distance away the force constant remains same so i can break it up into instead of summing over all atoms i can do it over p greater than 0 that means and i break for the neighbor maybe right and neighbor left so distance either plus a or plus pa or minus pa i can write it as sum over e to the power i p k a plus e to the power minus i p k a and minus 2 here this gives me if i add it up it omega square is given by this very simple we come from there to here because this two will give me 2 cos pk negative goes out so it gives us 2 cos pk minus 2 so get, taking two common i get 1 minus cos pk now for nearest neighbor only my sum gives me just so cp i have got only c1 and that gives me a solution which is 4c1 by m sin ka by 2 So it's a sinusoidal curve, and this is given by this is the force constant, and this omega and k are related by sine. So this is the derivation for a monatomic nearest neighbor atom, and you can see that we have a wave-like solution, or rather, there are there are. dispersion relations which is sine like now question is that <coughs> what sort of displacement we are talking about 